Hey everyone, how you doing? Wow. So today marks 10 years that I've actually been on social media. Wow. I kind of spent a little bit too much time on social media, but you know, biblical oriented things and so on. But um, wow, I can't believe it. It's 10 years. I'm, I've learned a lot about um, the state of the church and um, how some Christians really are, how bad the, the current state of the, state of the church actually is. Um, it's mind boggling. Um, so I wanted to just give a few words. Um, I wish that there were some people who would not, you know how like when someone posts something, um, a theological thing, and then it just turns into a whole royal rumble debate, you know, a big massive debate. And um, I just wish that some of the people who do that, I just wish that they actually would study things um, well before they comment and because there's way too many people who they think they're an, they think that they're an expert on everything and um, they'll make assertions on certain theological subjects and they haven't really did really any kind of meaningful meaningful study. So yeah, I mean everyone could do what they want with their social media account, you know, with Facebook or whatever. But I mean, <clears throat> when you go out there and you put out stuff in the public, and you um, you comment on certain theological subjects, and you really didn't do a whole lot of study on those subjects, that really bothers me. It's just, it just wastes people's time. And it's just so arrogant. And if you're going to comment or debate on the internet, please do serious study on the theological subjects that you're making positive assertions about that you you know think that you're an expert on. Because uh, I don't know. But anyway, please. There's so many books and reputable sites that you can go to now on the internet. Learn how to do exegesis, okay? Read about the rules of exegesis, how we're supposed to understand what the Bible is saying, the intent of the author, taking into account what, what the original language, you know, all that the historical context. There's people who just, they don't do any kind of serious study. And they go out there and... and they think that they're experts in the Bible and they just really don't know what they're talking about on so many things. And, and that's just, it's just wrong when you put public information out there, when you, when you put stuff out there publicly and, you know, you're just creating more confusion. And it's, it's really, it's unfortunately, it's a plague. Um, so yeah, please learn how to do um, exegesis. I mean, study the, the simple, the rules. Um, how to do um there's good books you know i don't agree with everything that um wayne grudem believes but his new uh, updated systematic theology i just got it recently i've been going through it an introduction to um biblical doctrine it's um the new updated edition it's uh it's really good i mean i'm gonna disagree i mean i haven't finished it yet i read you know a good portion of the old one I disagreed with his, you know, prophecy of Agabus. I didn't, I didn't think that that was um, accurate. I thought that was kind of an attack on, you know, inerrancy. And, um, but you know, that's the easiest of its kind, I think. And there's a lot of good stuff in there, and you could learn so much about theology and what the Bible teaches on. Systematic theology is pretty is what the Bible teaches on any given subject, you know. So, you know good source to have, good resource to have. Um, please do study before you go out there and think that you're an expert in everything and you never did any serious, meaningful study. I mean, if you did serious study on a certain subject and you want to debate and, and, and post stuff, yeah, but I mean, people who 
really didn't study a certain thing and they act like they're an experts. That is such prideful arrogance and that is a plague in the Christian church, unfortunately. Um, another thing, and it was during my social media time that uh, you know, unfortunately, the church has gone into such a state of, it's just so horrible. Um, most churches keep people on a baby level of the Bible, and there's so much false doctrine out there. And there were certain subjects in the church that were never debatable, but now they're debatable. And um, lordship is one of them. And that's, uh, gosh, uh, the free grace, the false doctrine of free grace theology is a plague in the United States of America. Please. If you um, are outside the United States of America, you know, the majority of, uh, you know, the, the stuff on TV and all that, don't, that's, that's poison, you know? So I just cannot believe that the Lordship controversy is even a controversy within the church. It's so beyond sickening and and mind-boggling how um and it's because you know the church has been watered down for years and so many unregenerated people they go to church now and um you know romans one people they love their sins so they want to suppress the truth and people want to pretend they're a christian and you know uh remain in their sin with uh, no repentance, and that's you know, repentance is an essential part of the gospel. Well, I mean, there's so many verses on the lordship thing. I mean, the the free grace theology antinomianism that just throws out repentance. I mean, you got to throw out most of the Bible. You got to throw out Second Corinthians seven one. I mean, you go to James one twenty two to twenty four. It says, prove yourselves doers of the word and not just hearers who deceive themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at him and himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. 1 Corinthians 2, 4 says, the one who says... I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Romans 8, 8 to 9 says, You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Um, go through Romans 6. And, and and no, obedience is not works. Um, Philippians 2.13 says, It is God who is at work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Um, so, it, it, you know, Jesus said, You are my friends if you do what I command you. You know, re good works are not the cause of justification. It's the result. It comes afterwards. We, we, we are not saved by good works. So good works is, are not the result of, um, good works are not the cause of justification. It's the result. Good works come afterwards because the Spirit of God's in you. But anyway, <clears throat> that's one of the major problems in the Christian church. Um, shifting gears. Oh my goodness. The hyper-Calvinists who believe that, you know, if you're an Arminian, you're going to go to hell. The, they make, they make, um, peripheral subjects essential. And wow, I'm telling you, that kind of stuff, that Pharisee, Stuff that really irks me. And I lost it. I, I got into this with some, with, there was all these comments. And you know what? I'm a Calvinist. I'm Reformed. I'm Reformed Baptist. And Reformed people are not immune to 
childish childish nonsense and acting like big babies. Um, you know, sometimes Calvinists try to come across like, oh, it's the Arminians, you know, they're that false doctrine. And, but you know what? There's the negative form of fundamentalism in reform circles as well. And I, I see it. I see childishness. Unfortunately, there's hyper on both sides of the fences. Calvinists who damn Arminians to hell, Arminians who damn Calvinists to hell. <clears throat> but anyway, I one of my comments on um, Facebook, I really lost it. And uh, there was all these comments going on. And I said, I'm sick of some of the smug, pompous ass, chosen, frozen Pharisees out there. And I'm glad Dr. White, Dr. James White, feels the same. I believe Arminians and Pentecostals are saved. Many of them... Um, Many of them, and I re and I responded in comments about what I thought of the false teaching that you have to be a Calvinist to be saved. Hyper Calvinism, uh, one of the, one of the points of or uh, one of the aspects of hyper Calvinism. I mentioned the thief on the cross was not a Calvinist, and we don't have to be perfect in our theology to be saved. See Hebrews five two. But I continued to respond to that claim, so I wanted to um, uh, post here what I said to all my Reformed uh, brothers and sisters, and uh, for whoever. I said, I was clear the five points are, aren't essential. You speak as if it's normative in Reformedom to think, that, to think all Arminians are lost. Let me be clear. I never held to that. I don't know any theologically sound Reformed Baptist pastor in my area who thinks that. And to go full-blown Luther in the sense of language, the theology that takes that aspect of hyper-Calvinism is bullshit. It's the equivalent of a pool of crap, piss, and vomit that's been laying out in the sun for hours, rotting. There's going to be many Arminians, Pentecostals, who will receive much more rewards than the hyper-Calvinism chosen frozen Pharisees. You can have Jesus as Lord and have some errors. Uh, those are peripheral. The Calvinist versus Arminian debate stuff, important but not essential. I would say the Trinity and the deity of Christ, um, the deity of Jesus are essential and faith alone. And I understand that the Arminian who is more simple-minded and sees those verses about choosing life or death are confused on certain things, but never did I think that was essential. And I'm thankful that's not the that's not considered to be the orthodox Calvinist position, but the imbalanced, hyper-Calvinist, putrid theology position. Apollos in Acts 18 was saved, verse 25 says, This man has been had been instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in spirit, he was accurately speaking and teaching things about Jesus, being acquainted only with the baptism of John. But then verse 26 says, But when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God more accurately to him. Notice that he had a limited knowledge of the gospel. It said, being acquainted only with the baptism of John. But notice that he was still a Christ follower before people explained to him the scriptures more accurately. Um, so I, I just want to say, I know I use some strong language there. And if we look in Ezekiel, <clears throat> God uses strong language. Um, we see the um, Elijah mocking the Baal worshippers as your God in the bathroom. <clears throat> Some translations try to hide that in the Hebrew. Um, so, I mean, we see Paul saying that he wishes that the uh, false teachers would castrate themselves. So I use strong language there, but God in his word, you know, he uses strong language. So there has to be a balance with that too. Um, so I, I went on and I just said... Um, Hyper-Calvinists need to meditate and study 1 Corinthians 13, 
1 to 3. So what does that say? If I speak with the tongues of mankind and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all of my possessions to charity, and if I surrender my body so that I may glory, but do not have love, it does, it does me no good. So, I really am sickened by um, by some of the arrogance that I see in um, the Christian church. And unfortunately, I mean, I'm not just, this is not only with Calvinists. I've seen the same thing with Arminians. So there is that level of hyper on both sides. And I just really wish, I mean, I've been on social media now. Like I said, today marks 10 years. And I just wish that um, Christians would be actually more loving like they're supposed to be, you know, correctly following Jesus. And the arrogance of going out there and, you know, being so sure about certain various doctrinal issues and acting like you're the expert on so many things. You're the authority. There's so many Christians, unfortunately, who take that attitude. And unfortunately, it's, um, you know, it's people who never did serious study on those subjects, but they act like they're the experts on them. So please, if you're going to do that, if, you, if you're going to go out there and debate and um, say, oh, this is the way it is, you know, um, please do meaningful, serious study on what you're making positive assertions on. I mean, really, if, I, if, I, if I'm not an engineer, I don't know anything about engineering, I'm not going to go up to a group of engineers and act like I, I understand their job. You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. But um, people get away with that a lot in Christian churches, unfortunately. So, and, you know, yeah, lordship, lordship is a big problem. Um, people just throwing out lordship. That is a false gospel, and um, repentance is an essential part of the gospel. Um, God commands everyone to repent of their sins, and um, that's that's part of the gospel. It's not this free grace, antinomian version of that. So, I just kind of wanted to uh, make a, a video, wasn't too short, I see, um, on my 10-year, <laughs> uh, 10 years on social media, because i um, uh, I love my Christian brothers and sisters. I met a lot of cool people out there on social media. Hi. And um, unfortunately, there's a lot of nonsense. But, um, and I know we can do better.